Hello there, Akko here. This video is a precursor to a factorization rule to sorting system I'm going to make. Um, my current sorting system uses red power pneumatic tubes, which are very good, but uh, with the barrels, it kind of spreads the barrels out a bit. What I want to do is make a more compact design using the factorization rule test so all the barrels can be touching each other. Um, so this little video here is showing you an overflow mechanic for the router that I've mocked up. It seems to work. Um, I'm going to test this more thoroughly and if it doesn't end up working I'll make sure this video gets deleted. Um, so first of all I'm just going to run through what the factorization router is, what it does. Um, this is a factorization router. Without any upgrades you can either insert or extract. And you can pick which side you're going to insert and then extract from. And What this does is it'll interact with any block with an inventory that's touching it. So if I was to put anything into here now, so I've just got a relay just to put things in, you'll see that it'll put things into everywhere. It put sand into the top of the filter, it puts sand into each of these barrels. And because then it got jammed up, my overflow kicked in, which I'll explain how that works in a bit. Well, there's a lot of sand back. So, standard, it can be, it throws things everywhere, so you may, you, you need to um, add a couple of upgrades. I'll show you how you make the router first. <coughs> Pardon me. The router's made with dark iron, ingots, ender pearls, eyes of ender, and eggs. Um, I heard somewhere that the the reason for the egg is it's an ender chicken that moves the things about, but I don't know where that came from, where that rumour came from. Anyway, so yeah, that's how you make the router. Um, and all the router upgrades all require dark iron as well. I'll run through each of these in a second. First of all, I'll show you how you make dark iron. You make dark iron using blocks of iron and an item called a wrath igniter. Now, Wrath igniter. I've set up I'll just show you how to make that. What you need for the wrath igniter is a diamond shard and a nether brick. Now diamond shards are a little bit fiddly to make. You also need diamond shards to make some of the router upgrades because they need a logic matrix identifier which requires a crystallizer, which requires something that uses diamond shards that I forget the name of, but I'll get to that later. So, this is how you make the diamond shards. You need obsidian, TNT, and a diamond block. And a crafting table. That'll make you a craft packet. And the craft packet then goes into a thing called a craft packet stamper. Craft packet stamper, pretty straightforward. Crafting table, piston, some iron, and some cobble. And what that will do, that will make you... 18 of these diamond shards. Um, once you've got the diamond shards, you just combine it with a bit of nether brick, gives you a wrath igniter. What you use a wrath igniter for is you can ignite various things, including iron. If you ignite iron, it'll turn it into dark iron. Be careful where you do this because if your floor's flammable, it can uh, interact with your floor quite dramatically. Um, I have got a little raft furnace set up but um, I'm not sure if I've done it right. The the fire always goes out after 36 blocks so I, I don't know if that's by design or if, I'm, if I've set it up wrong. But I'll make sure that in a different episode. So you just set fire to them, put any resulting fires out, get your blocks of dark iron. If you put them in your crafting square you can uh, turn them into dark iron ingots. So that's how you get the dark iron ingots. So that's how you make your routers. Now quickly I'm going to go for the router upgrades and then I'll explain which ones we need for this. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six router upgrades. The item filter, just as it says, you can filter which items can go into the router. The machine filter, which is the one we'll need, is um, 
it can that one determines which machines or which inventory blocks around the router that it'll interact with the speed boost let should have a look at these as we're, as we're going through actually so we'll go back to item filter that requires a logic matrix identifier which is um which i'll show you how to make them that's a little bit complicated in its own right i'll do a little separate video on how you how you craft them um chest gold redstone an identifier machine filter also needs an identifier this is a book some silver a redstone torch in that one speed boost insets into machines with no delay so um i don't think we'll need that in this but we may i'll um i'll i'll check how that works i've not had cause to use that one yet um that requires some sugar and some cake cake requires milk wheat and eggs uh thoroughness what thoroughness does is you saw when i put the sand in here it put sand in each what thoroughness would do is if there was at least one sand in each instead of spreading out the rest of the sand what thoroughness would do is fill the first barrel before moving on to the next uh, bandwidth which is one we're going to need let's um it moves stacks at a time so if i was to put a stack of sand in there it'd go one at a time into different inventories with a bandwidth upgrade it'd move that full stack um, and for this system we need that and finally ejector that just lets you eject out of the routers into chests or you need to use that with a machine filter as well otherwise it'll just keep pulling things back in from whatever you eject into so um I'm, uh, I'm actually using ejectors on some systems upstairs i'll show you real quick Oops. so there because the relay kicks things out real quick um I'm not, i've not actually got a machine filler on there but that's pulling this route is pulling ejecting into that relay from all these so three recyclers master rate compressor extractor furnace all get pulled into that router and back out into the sorting system so for this we need two upgrades first of all we'll look at the standard router um, insert or extract and then you can determine which side you want to insert in terms of the big list of stuff there so what we want to do is insert into top sides because we want to insert into the top side of the barrel now the first upgrade we're going to need is machine filter upgrade so you just shift right click and that'll put that in there and now you get this extra bit here if you click on that it'll run you through the different things the router has in it so what we want to do here is set that to barrel so now it'll only insert into barrels and the second upgrade we're going to need is the bandwidth upgrade so now when things come into here it'll move as the full stack so it'll immediately put stuff straight into them barrels so it, depending on when i set this up it may need the speed one i'm not 100 percent sure the speed one works if it starts getting jammed up i'll put the speed one and see if that makes a difference so that's the actual route set up so now we look at the overflow setup if we had all our barrels populated and one barrel got full the items would get stuck in here and it jam up whatever system you're running so it jam up your quarries or wherever else your items are coming from so what we want to do is we, we we need a we need something to get rid of this if it gets jammed in there so that's what this little system does pretty straightforward we've got a structure pipe there can't spell type um cobblestone structure pipe that's just a cobblestone transport pipe and a bit of gravel um gravel that's just two bits of cobblestone and a bit of glass make sure them so what that does is a structure pipe will attach to anything so the cobblestone structure pipe attaches to the router that allows you to add an attack at gate and the attack at gate is it detects so space and inventory then redstone signal on so as long as there's nothing 
in that slot there, this redstone signal will turn, it'll stay on. And what that does, this is a state cell. So your state cell, stone wire, stone point air, cathode, uh, silicon chip requires a red dot wafer. They're all pretty straightforward things. Uh, you make stone wafer by recooking smooth stone. So the redstone signal keeps the state cell on. If the redstone signal breaks, then the state cell turns off. What the state cell does, it's it has a timer you can set. So you didn't really see that, but when that gets turned off, it'll actually wait for the amount of time you set before putting this signal on. So basically it's what I've done there is it's set to a second, so something has to be in there for a second before this kicks in. We don't want to do it immediately because as soon as if you did it immediately, as soon as anything came in, the system would kick in and it'd try and put it into the overflow. So we need we need some delay on there. Now I've set it to a second, it may need fine tuning to be lower or higher. Um fine tuning it's just a case of doing this, um changing these. So when the state cell gets turned off after a second, it cuts this line, it cuts this um, power line, if you will. And what that does, that lets the timer run. The timer pulses the filter, so that'll pull out whatever's stuck in here. So you see that in action, real quick. I've got some, put some sand in there, and put some other things in there with it. You see that front run too quick, so I think they're getting jammed back, but. We've got one of each thing going into the barrels and then when everything else is getting stuck it's just getting thrown into there. Now, uh, I'll throw them in again. You can see the state cell at work there. You see the state cell has to do its timer before it actually fires the filter. So that should work. Um, I'm going to test it a bit more thoroughly once I've started setting the system up. And I'll probably do videos of setting the system up anyway. So for now, that's all there is to show. So thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Cheers. Bye.